over 25 leaders, ranging from the new presidents of South Korea and Zambia to the prime ministers of Japan and Jamaica, demonstrating the global reach of Britain's diplomacy and the value of our presence at the world's top tables. Our immediate priority is to join with our allies to ensure that Ukraine prevails in her brave struggle against Putin's aggression. At the Madrid summit, NATO exceeded all expectations in the unity and single-minded resolve of the alliance to support Ukraine for as long as it takes and to explode the myth that Western democracies lack the staying power for a prolonged crisis. All of us understand that if Putin is not stopped in Ukraine, he will find new targets for his revanchist attacks, and we are not defending some abstract ideal, but the first principle of a peaceful world, which is that large and powerful countries cannot be allowed to dismember their neighbours. And if this was ever permitted, then no nation anywhere would be safe. Therefore, our goal must be for our Ukrainian friends to win, by which I mean that Ukraine must have the strength to finish this war on the terms that President Zelensky has described. And when Putin claimed that by invading his neighbour he would force NATO away from Russia, he could not have been proved more spectacularly wrong. Because the single most welcome outcome of the Madrid summit was the alliance's agreement to admit Finland and Sweden. And I hope I speak for the whole House when I say that Britain will be proud to stand alongside these fellow democracies and reaffirm our unshakable pledge to come to their aid and defend them, if ever necessary, just as they would for us. We were glad to smooth their path into NATO by giving both nations the security assurances they needed to apply for membership. And when I met Prime Minister Andersson of Sweden and President Niinistö of Finland last Wednesday, I told them I was certain that NATO would be stronger and safer for their accession. Before Putin's onslaught, both countries had prized their neutrality even through all the crises of the Cold War. And it's a measure of how seriously they take today's threat that opinion in Sweden and Finland has been transformed. And it speaks volumes about Putin's folly that one permanent consequence of his, of consequence of his attack on Ukraine will be a doubling of the length of NATO's border with Russia.